ESOS is now well and truly with us and many businesses are already very busy putting together everything they need to comply. My name is Wendy Buckley and I'm Client Director at Carbon Footprint. Over the next few minutes I'm going to run you through a number of steps and anecdotes from our client's experience with ESOS so far. So ideally you will have already started your ESOS project. Let's bear in mind that the compliance dates are really not so far ahead now. Interestingly, a recent survey by ED found out that 60% of companies haven't done anything yet. We have many clients at different stages within their process. Some of our clients is actually already finished. All the evidence so far points to there being about four months of time between starting and completing an ESOS project. Now clearly that does depend on the size and complexity of your business. We've just outlined here on screen a typical timeline for a company that shows the various stages between the initial scoping out and the total energy calculation through to completing the energy assessment on site and completing the compliance reporting. We're always keen for clients to take on at least some of the work themselves. It's because we want you to learn I've shown here what a typical total energy calculation looks like. This is quite straightforward. Notice here the inclusion of both the buildings and associated processes and also of the transportation. We're always amazed at how many spreadsheets appear in front of us without the transportation numbers in or with incorrect units associated with these. I really must impress that this is something you must get right with your finance teams and this is important information to take forward. So you've got the total energy calculation clear. This is something that you do need to put in front of your ESOS lead assessor to check. Unfortunately, some people do seem to be in a bit of a rush to get to do on-site surveys. The key point still is that you need to be looking at that total energy calculation and critically, you need to be doing the desktop energy analysis of the 90% before you go anywhere near being on site. The risk of going on site too early is that you end up auditing the wrong things and you end up with rework and that's expense and that's resource. When it comes to selecting the exact site, you will be able to take a representative sample that ESOS calls the proportionate approach. Good ESOS lead assessors will provide you with excellent learning opportunities and transfer some of those skills to your organisation, so make sure you get the value from them. Once you've finished all that work, you'll be ready to put together your evidence pack. And I'm showing here on screen the list of things that you need to include within that. It is very straightforward, you don't need any software to compile it. Once you've completed this work, you'll be ready to complete the online questionnaire Again, this is very straightforward. You will need some basic information about the company entity and your ESOS lead assessor will be able to guide you through that process. Hopefully the declaration of compliance isn't the final step and although there isn't a legal obligation for you to take forward the recommendations on energy reductions, we sincerely hope that you will and you'll see that there are some good savings in your organisation on the whole, we've found that businesses have been very pleasantly surprised at the amount of work they can contribute towards ESOS. So if you have any questions about your ESOS programme, whether you've started or maybe you haven't started yet at all, please go get in contact with us. We'd be delighted to speak with you and help you with your compliance.